Hello everyone, this is Connor, and today I'm back with another Islanders Challenge. The challenge this time, uh, this is the second island in a run. You can actually probably tell by the score this is the same sequence of islands as I got from my must-choose-the-buildings-you-don't-want-to-unlock challenge. This time, my challenge is every single building that I place much must be touching a building I previously placed. With the one exception, of course, being that my first building will touch the statue. So I, I have essentially no idea how this will impact the game. I haven't given it a ton of thought. I haven't tried to make plans ahead of time. I'm just going to talk through it in real time. I do think this island is a good example because it's kind of flat, and I'm going to allow myself to place a building here and then one here, and as long as they're both touching this ledge, that, that counts, right? They're like as close to each other as they could be. Um, I might make a rule kind of on a case-by-case -case where I'm not allowed to place over too significant of a cliff, um, but in general I'm going to try and keep all of my buildings in one tight cluster, and I'm curious how that will affect the game. So obviously I hate farming, we will take lumber, and my goal will be to move in the direction of trees. And I actually, I really hope this is poss- oh wow, actually, will I just lose if I do that? Because each lumberjack will have to touch each other, so there'll be probably a negative, or maybe like a plus one. I think I will get there, but it'll be a close thing. Huh. Maybe under these bizarre circumstances, I do take farming. Because, like, I can't benefit from all these trees. I'm going to have to slowly step my way over. As much as I hate farming, I'm, I'm tempted. Because I can kind of just, like, drop my farming off onto this low ground and just live down there, right? Huh. This... <sighs> I'm enjoying these challenges because they immediately give me new thoughts that I haven't ever had about Islanders. I think, in spite of myself, I will I'll take the fields. So, the mill will get, uh, sorry, the mill is worth five points to each field. So I place the mill first, that's ten extra points total, versus placing the fields first, which is eight extra points total. So I should place the mill first, and I'm going to place it in this direction, because like I said, I want to get my fields away from other valuable areas. So I will place like that, and then, all right, here's the first kind of decision. How, how close to the edge do I have to be? Like, is that close enough that I can then place on the low ground, or do I actually have to be totally flush with it? I think it makes it more interesting if I have to be totally flush, but maybe I don't have to have full contact, right? So like this, where you can see from my drag, I can't, you know, slide any further because I'm touching both the wall and the mill. I think that should be sufficient. And then this would be a legal placement. That seems like the most interesting interpretation. I'm going to take brewing just because it'll let me cover a lot of ground. These are big and I want to move over into the trees. <laughs> Not normally a consideration, but here we are. So, oh sweet, I can even touch it. Yeah, that's, that, you know, touch it with my radius, that is. I always say touch to imply um, whenever their detection radius includes each other, but now in this case, I literally do mean touch. Now these will all touch each other, no problems there. And I guess one like that. I don't want to take out these trees, but I might I might have forced myself into it. I don't want to build everything off angle. We'll go there. I'm trying to get, you know, lumber in that direction. Alright, so another weird decision. Do I place the city center immediately, thus getting maximum points from these buildings? Or do I use these buildings to shift where I'm allowed to place the city center and then place it in a more profitable location? I think... Yeah, I'll place this here just to continue my progress towards that cliff. And then I think there's actually enough space around it here that I kind of may as well 
because it's, I mean, what is it going to be, a six-point deduction? Yeah. <coughs> you know, six points is not significant enough to be worth missing out on much. So I think I actually do go one, one house in, then city center, like here, maybe upwards actually. Yeah, that seems fine. Then I'll come into direct contact on that side, and new building, sweet. Um, oh, shamans. Shamans are going to be a bit of a struggle. I do want them, but I might actually take lumber first, because I'm kind of well set up for lumber. But then I miss the chance of potentially getting a bonus shaman when I take lumber. Okay, this is a good result. I'm happy with this result. So I'll need to go two more fields away before I can place this without the minus. But that does seem worthwhile. So let's try and engineer that situation. Yeah, I need one more. One more field of distance, and I can put it out here. And I could just, you know, plop this shaman down proudly right here. And that does actually... Yeah, that's, that's going to be really good. I'm happy with that. I know this gold mine is here, but keep in mind, with the gold, you can place the mine and then the jeweler. Like, you can cover a pretty good amount of ground uh, moving away from the actual gold ore vein itself. This is basically just how I would normally place. <laughs> The city always ends up really tightly clustered. That's a cute location. I know that it did kill a tree, which I was trying to avoid, but... Oh, ooh, okay. How do I place water buildings? I had this thought previously, and I imagined, you know, I'll just go right up to, right up to the cliff and then fall off. Um, but I actually think most of these cliffs are too tall to make any sense. So maybe if I, like, multiple stair step down, um, like... Actually, I don't really see... Okay, over here is low enough that it feels fair to me. Like, if I manage to build all the way down to here. So definitely avoiding the fissure, because I, I couldn't use them for anything right now. Maybe I'll change that rule in the future, if it seems more fun a different way. But for the time being, let's be real, uh, real tough about it. Harsh, but fair. Like that. And then... Oh, no! Barely contacts. There we go, okay. So, I have this small sprawl going on. The city's going to look very distinct compared to how my cities normally look, which is part of the reason I'm doing this. So I'm, I'm pleased with how it's going so far. Same logic, I basically can't take the fissure. Probably should have held on to that. I'm not touching the shaman, but it's not like I'm ever going to. Unless maybe the other shape of house could work. Those are all sweet. Happy with that. Again can't take the fisher. This mill's awkward. You can get 16 points from it pretty easily. Or 24. But I don't think there is really a good spot. No, I guess I can go all the way out here. Okay, so if I manage to build my way out here, I can get a better score. That won't be impossible either, like two more uh, hops fields that direction would do it. Speaking of, is it time for these? So because of that point of contact, I feel like I should be able to build up here. That seems fair enough. I mean, there's also an argument about how significant can the slope be? Like, is the real judge they need to be 
a certain distance from each other when seen, like, straight on, um, in which case this would definitely not be legal. But I think that, given that this is kind of a meaningless, made-up challenge anyway, I'm going to allow myself to build up that slope. Um, although it might be fun in the future to stick to very steep or even, you know, essentially vertical edges, although I don't, I don't know if the game will ever generate straight vertical lines. I think they always get a little bit smaller going up. But all that to say, I'm going to place this, I will place it as close to this point as I can, so like there, rather than here. Um, and I would love to like just move it just a tiny bit in to get 12, but I can't. That is not allowed. So we'll take that, and then I just have to do this. <laughs> I don't see any other reasonable. I should actually, um, given that it's going to be seven points no matter what, I should go this direction because it's likelier that the next one ends up over here. Okay. I don't want to place this yet. I might get another lumberjack and then the sawmill will get a bigger point boost. I'm not crazy about the prospect of placing many mansions. I can't get high points off them yet. Could just go ahead and do this. It seems kind of wacky, honestly. But I don't have a lot of choices. It's like, what seven point mansion do I want? Okay, I saw a single 15 point, and I will take that. 15 points is okay with me. Then we'll take the 27 as well. And then we'll delete it because I want to put that down first, that down, and then a 33. Could be worse. Parks, of course. Again, I, I literally cannot place fishers, so anything is better than that. Got a new shaman. Could just place it for points up here. Especially at this point, I think I would use the sawmill to leapfrog myself further so I can place this, like, here or something. Um, I also have these parks, which are probably pretty good. Oh, <laughs> line parks are... Oh, that's weird. That's as far in as I can go. I guess this building is larger than its vision. Um, larger than its visual, that is. Yeah, like, there's a square edge around the outside here. That is, you can see from my mouse movement, that is as far as I can go. Let's, um, let's try and put this mill down, <laughs> just for fun. Okay, so I want it to be here. And I can have, you know, a field like there, and then this park. Probably, I want to get more points from it. Five, but let's do it like that, and then now this is gonna get real finessey. I'm gonna have to delete this several times, probably. But 33, like right there. So if I build that. Thirty-seven. I know it looks close, but there is quite a bit of move between them, so... Thirty-seven is what we're looking for. Okay, not quite enough. direct contact. 37 points. Yeah, mills are high scoring. The fields suck, but mills are very nice buildings. I 
again. I'm gonna save it. Um, let's do my stupid shaman plan. Where do I want it? Right there. Now, do that. And then I can do some really decent point value mansion stuff up here. So we'll get there. My mansions are not the best, but they're not horrible. Um, actually, fields first. Tower. New city center, sweet. Okay, um... I guess it goes up here, actually. I guess I try and transition to this high ground. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I'm going to be taking out these trees, but, you know, lumber is never going to be worth as much as a good city. city up here is kind of working. I'm going to stick with this for the time. Get some more points out of it. While I can. Cool. And then... Oh, I actually can't... I'm not touching the building, right? I'm getting caught in between the gold mine and the wall. Yeah, so I can't place there. That's illegal. So I could try something like this instead. Could go up and around here. I'm kind of creating a mansion area for my jeweler, though. So I want to keep that in mind. I also have four fields now, so... Could cash in some of these. Like so. Okay, does that touch allow me to build up here? Definitely not right here, but up here on the edge, maybe. You know, I think for my own peace of mind, I'd like a little more contact than that. There's really no way to strictly define this rule set, unfortunately. So. Gonna have to make case by case rulings on many things. Okay, but this line park will. if it even fits. Okay, so even if a line park doesn't fit, surely that means that we have enough contact. And I'll even. I'll put it here, touching the wall. So yeah, we got this whole edge of contact there. Run up the wall to the circus. Don't actually know if I'm placing the circus yet, but I'm now allowed to. Seems good. I mean, that's... yeah. I'm okay with that. The aforementioned gold mine. So I have to touch a building I've already placed. So, one of these two. I guess the house is worth a lot less. And the jeweler's gonna go... I guess the jeweler's going... So I need to 
place with that in mind. So this needs to be right there. See, they're touching directly. And jeweler's probably up to 30 points perfectly. Yeah. actually going well. I'm happy with that little area. Save that spot for a normal house. But 21. I'll take 21. Once I get wall plateaus, I'll have to figure out how the rules address them. <laughs> probably just have to place them as low as possible, so they're touching the top of a building. That feels pretty restrictive. Should I be trying to make my way over to this edge? Is that how I unlock my ability to build water buildings? Do I consider, like, step, step significant enough? I think that's a pretty significant distance to jump. Similarly, this is all too sloped. Could come over to here and then, if it's legal, yeah, down onto this. That's not as far. But I kind of like the idea of having to go all the way across the island just to put down water buildings. I think it'll look more interesting, because I do like this aspect. <laughs> My lack of other industry buildings is restricting how much I have to do that, but... I don't want to put anything down here except for mansions until I have the jeweler down at least. Obviously you don't build the market yet. Seven. It's pretty good. Minus four. Oh yeah, okay. That's actually gonna be worth it. Nice. Direct contact there. Reaches all the way over to there. Plenty. Plenty of contact. Twenty-seven. I have to like remind myself to <laughs> always collide a building. <laughs> hmm. They're kind of lame, but maybe huts. Like these little 15 point rinky dinks. I guess I should try and score off of the other semi-valuable buildings I'm carrying first. one fewer point, but it'll be significantly likelier to get picked up by my next mill, which is probably just going out here. And now I only have to place one hut. That went alright.
so actually it's it's too perfectly centered. It doesn't allow building on either side of it. Let's go more like that. Sweet. Direct contact all around there. I do want to hold off on placing the jeweler as long as possible, but it may be almost at that point. Direct contact there, even though it doesn't have it there. Oh, the resort oasis is going to be kind of a challenge. Maybe I build down to here and then put on this low ground. Currently, there's probably no positive location I can place it. That's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Okay. Oh, but like awkward situations like this where it's a little bit more than one building. I guess I can, yeah, I can use the corners. That seems like a fair compromise. So I can do that, and then that would be legal. Probably even that, yeah corner to corner, but I still can't use fissures. I should probably be working my way over there with low point value buildings. Speaking of, okay, do I take a 13 or do I take a 5 that moves me towards my next goal? Well, I do think I'm going to build another house over here. So that can give me a little more distance. And then... Oh, so actually, that's steep enough. I probably have to go around first. Just to make it hard for myself. It seems more interesting that way. So what do I place instead? Oh, well, that's kind of an easy choice. Seven there versus 41. Yeah, 47 is going to be essentially unbeatable. Maybe time to just cash in the jeweler. I've been holding it. I don't see how else I'm getting there just from. I have to place a lot of huts, I guess. So let's try the jeweler instead. So I have a 51. There definitely is a 55, right, somewhere. Yeah, but that's not in direct contact. So can I find the 55? Yep, there we go. Corner to corner contact. They're touching. It's only 55, too. I'm acting like this is some huge, like, 160 point um, market or whatever. But no, it's... Just decent. Okay, I got enough stuff going on over here. Let's try and build towards the water. So actually, hmm, this would move me a considerable distance. If I can find a reasonable place to put this down. 16 seems pretty reasonable to me. Yeah, let's do it that way. Okay. So, place the 16. Then, we'll take an 84. Sweet. Then, It's just going to suck to use, like, probably two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Like, probably thirteen to fifteen buildings just to get to the water. 
So this is, it's good that we're making progress, but let's not invest too heavily in that, not at the expense of other points. So for example, why don't use these over here where they will benefit my resort oasis. One right there. That seems like a legal placement, because that park is already touching the edge. Could have sworn I saw it. Yeah, there we go. Nine. Oh, seaweed farms are also near unplaceable. Okay, okay. Still probably the choice over fishers, but I do need to start moving that way. Looks like time might be of the essence before I start stocking up on impossible buildings. Bunch of 52s, so we'll take... Build this first. Yeah. Corner to corner, touch right there, although it's so far away. I don't know exactly how I feel about that from a rules perspective. But just to keep things moving, I'll, I'll place it and play on. I don't expect you guys to be furious about that. <laughs> and did I block myself out of something nice? What did I have before? I forget my own score. 52. And then plus 7. And now I can get... Seven. So I'm missing two points I had previously. Probably at least one of those, like a tree I killed. But 57's good enough. Whenever I see the next 57, I'll take it. See, that is as far in as I can go. Fifteen's good. Now, let's start moving. So, there, then there, then there. And I'm building a chain, and we'll continue down across that way. But the best I could do. I can also use walls, which just will cover a lot of ground. Like, they'll be terrible scores, but maybe that's worth it. say like that rope has to be touching a building which seems fair I mean, the rope is part of the balloon and clearly it's touching buildings in these spots I can't go on the low ground as much as I would like to <laughs> but I could build it over here ah that's cute that works yeah there, nice reach there. Just make a little bit of progress, steadily, over time. We'll get there. Although I actually can't be that steady with it. Looking at my buildings, I do not have a lot of points banked. <laughs> this challenge may be significantly harder than the choose the wrong buildings one. Or maybe I'm just worse at it. It's also strongly, strongly possible. squeeze between these two. It's a more direct path to the water. Is anywhere else a legal way to get in the water? Maybe that would work. 
that's pretty significant, but it's, it's less than that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, my water rules are already pretty arbitrary. I think I'm going to keep building the long way around just because it seems more fun. Like, pick the coast furthest from the statue, and that's where you're allowed to enter the water. interspersed all of my fields and farms over there but this will score decently yeah around here where most of my other fields are so I can get a 60 something from it what's really awkward is I don't know how on earth I'm gonna successfully get wall plateaus over this to build the temple on but that is a challenge for future Connor <laughs> Consider putting it down here, which is not going to work, it looks like. Um, yeah, up there is also pretty crap. And finally, okay, sweet. So this is going to be the fountain placement for sure. That actually worked out okay. You know, I've seen better fountains, but I've also seen much worse. Let's, let's just do it. Let's just go crazy most of the way there. Unlike on points, where I am still quite a distance away from where I need to be. Hmm. Maybe water... Oh! Okay, that's fair. Water plateaus are how I get in the water. That's an interesting way to do it. Because the water plateaus can clip into land. So I need to clip in until I'm touching a building. Although, if the height elevation is too great, it'll just drift over. So that can be how I judge how high up I'm allowed to go. Yes, yeah, so see, this is too high because I can just slide in underneath it. But um, I'm going to undo this. Don't worry. I'm just trying to fact check my idea. No, actually, okay, that doesn't work. For some reason, I thought this would, like, butt into whatever I was building. But I guess that requires very low to the water ground. Like that. Okay, well, that does make sense. So let's, let's transition the rules to mean that. But does it mean that all this is a crapshoot that I need to abandon? Because I can't imagine anywhere here is going to be low enough. Yeah, it doesn't seem great. So, over here seems much more possible. I just need to move down one of these large slopes, which I previously would not have allowed, but... Oh, I can do it on a water plateau, though. Right? If I... I don't, how am I going to fact check this? If I put that there, then we can call that contact, right? Like, say it's vertical contact. Hmm. Or I could just stick with my original theory. I kind of like the water plateau idea as for how this rule should work.
Yeah, okay, let's do water plateaus. So, I need to get to this edge. Then I can hop down to here, put a water plateau on, and then I'm free to build in the water. So I could just do it with a wall, but, you know, that's not exactly high score. However, that works a little better. And then... I can do like that. Huh. Okay, tell you what, let's say that's contact. Because that was as far in as I could build and as far down as I could build. So let's call that contact. I would like to, you know, put these between them just for the meme, but... Actually, you know what? Let's do that. That's almost, yeah, see, right there, it's perfect contact. So it is touching them both. Okay, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll call that a transition. That makes sense. And then I can do that, and they are clearly bumping into each other. That's contact. Now I'm allowed to build in the water. So I can't quite reach. Maybe I put it here instead. Or maybe it's just impossible. Maybe we just accept that. Cool. Alright, well I have reached water. All that was a waste, but still defining the rule set. Not that the rule set will be relevant for much longer, as I think my end is coming. <laughs> I don't think I'll make it as far as I would have hoped. Even that 64 is not close to saving me. Yeah, I got plenty of 13s. And similar scores. Okay. Okay, it's not over yet. Um, even though I finally did unlock water, I think I, you know, have to go the wall plateau route. So, wall plateaus... Makes sense to me they must be built as low as possible, so they're contacting whatever's beneath them. I mean, this one's touching buildings on multiple sides. Touching the circus, touching what's beneath it. But I'd like to build on this other ledge, which isn't allowing me. Alright, there. That is clearly contact. It's legal. And then these are contacting each other. contacting the plateau, which does count, <laughs> as I think it should. And then, ooh, yeah, lots of crappy, hmm, well, that kind of sucks, actually. I'm not sure how much better it can get, though. Everything's so close together that I'm going to touch the minus buildings. Alright, so this mode definitely makes temples garbage. I actually do not have a lot of steam left. I'm going to burn out soon. That second one's just sloppy play, but even though I'm losing, there's really no excuse for throwing in the towel like that. some random low ground to try and transition to a new city area? Do I rely upon using these for my city? Certainly for the time being, I use them. Do I put it down here for 19 points currently and benefits to my fishers, which are otherwise scoring zero? 19's a good score. 
I transition onto this low ground so I can build a 26, which my fisher will barely touch. That seems like a strategy. Let's do that. So how am I going to get to this? Let's play this useless piece of crap. Alright, so this is touching the edge. So then I can actually be cleaner over here. Yeah, let's do it this way. Like that, and then like that. That's all legal. And then down here. That's all legal. Very fun. Very fun trying to solve these kind of lateral puzzles. Not at all the typical play pattern. My typical play pattern in Islanders has become, you know, try and engineer whatever situation I am given such that I can turn it into an island layout that I am familiar with and like, and, you know, I'm trying to homogenize my experience because I found the experience that I think is, uh, earns the most points. So I try and accomplish that everywhere. Makes sense. This is kind of a hard decision, like, building up here... Hmm. Excuse me. Building up here occupies more valuable space, and it's only a three-point difference, but I'm also kind of close to just dying, so does three points really... You know, am I going to get enough buildings to fill this space? Maybe. Hard to say, I think yes. I think I will. I'm gonna trust in myself, keep the gamble alive. You see, immediately, right, I want to build there. But I have a new plateau to place. New city center, possibly first. So I can build down here for 11 easy points. 26 easy points, that's a lot. 26 is a healthy enough score. I have spots to build the city right now, so let's, let's do that. We'll also benefit this new fissure, <laughs> so I at least can maintain a positive score, albeit a barely positive score, but still counts. And pretty easy to get 20 points through here. I really want to build. I only have the two shamans. One right here, one right here. I only have the four city centers, and they're spread out in kind of an awkward way. I actually think I just built this over here. I get the 20, sure. Those are obviously in contact. But now I can at least score off of both of those, which would be better for mansions. The houses should still just go right up here. Temple still sucks. Balloon's not going to be great. I guess I use walls to make it the rest of the way, score wise. Wow, another plateau just instantly. Pretty good payoff, though. Now I can. that better, or is there somewhere else I should be building? <laughs> what if I go up here? Okay, it's touching the field. That's fine. And that's gonna suck, though. That's gonna be such a low score. I don't think there's anywhere that will be better than here. Not exactly an inspiring success so far.
I don't have a plan for where this warehouse is going to go. So if I see a good point value, I'm just going to take it. 14 is decent. Oh, yeah, okay. Somewhere down here. Like so. Touching several buildings. Obviously it's on a plateau, so that counts. My earlier call about if I build another mill, it's probably going to be out here. Still holds true. There's no way that I can get something like a 50 from any of these other locations. are typically built in contact. Sweet. New shaman, new house. Pretty good stuff. Seven that requires no additional effort. Sign me up. that I built in from the wall there, but it's on a plateau, so it's touching. Eight points. And right there. There we go. Not that hard. almost always have a sequence that can be built in where they don't penalize you. So it's always worth thinking, like, this wall will detect here, but this wall will detect further out, so we'll place this one first, etc. Man, these are really killing me, given that my one seaweed farm that I've gotten so far I used to transition onto the low ground. Because that's a thing you have to do in Islanders now. <laughs> I mean, not you, the thing I have to do. to say about some of these placements. They seem 
self-explanatory to me. As always, begin with the highest tower. Considering whether or not I save this, like my original intent was yes, save it for your next market. I know it'll get the minus 35, but where else are you putting a market? But... Yeah. Yeah, 19 points per is not worth ruining that space for. I don't think. So I can scrape up some pittance of points elsewhere. Man, lots more city. Okay, let's... out here, just leave enough room for a wall, and then some real nice point payoffs. Huh. I bet there's, yeah, I was about to say, I bet there's one or two orientations that would fit in. It was worth looking for. these two plateaus, I could score some points off of them. Actually, a surprisingly high number. Dang. Looks like I have to go low ground with these towers. Maybe not low ground necessarily, but mid ground. If I can place them at all. Okay, and this last mansion, I hate this shape, I prefer any other shape, so I don't want to ruin everything I have going down there. I'm just going to place it for 9 points instead. You can't stop me. The shape is almost worse, but I will place it anyway. a long-term strategy for this island. I, I feel the end will come upon me faster than I expect, so for the time being I'm just scoring off of what I can. It's going to be another tower, for sure. Question is, where? Two. And can't quite get the mill. <laughs> Brutal. Fields suck. Their detection radius is quite small for such a low scoring building. I'll take an 18. No complaints here. Except for the one complaint that I'm about to lose. So interesting, this challenge is significantly harder than I expected it to be. Um, I was envisioning, you know, happy to chain my industry buildings into each other to build like an industry sector and then also having a residential area, but 
at least the way that I played, um, it kind of looks like the cities I normally build, just worse. <laughs> like, I, I still need to cluster buildings together. Um, now it's literally mandated that I do so. But that doesn't necessarily mean that those buildings will score off of each other, even if you're trying to place them intentionally. It's like a 20 somewhere. Yeah, but it's not touching anything. Ugh. 19, though. No, that's fine. I will accept 19 happily. Yeah, okay. Plus four is a positive score. We have two walls, so we should be careful with them. Got a 17. Oh, look at that. Underneath the houses. That's super fancy. I'll take the 17 then. And then, like a 20 whatever, mid 30s, 50 whatever, okay. I think 54 is as good as it's getting. Double checking that my previous towers were actually touching buildings, and they are. <laughs> I like kind of casually just forget the rule as I'm playing, um, and a lot of my buildings doesn't matter because I would have touched them anyway. I'll settle for 53, by the way. I don't want to spend too long hunting around for it, and that is a clear point of contact. Huh? Second. not have a positive score anywhere. I don't have a lot of land to work with. And I already have a lot of walls in this area. <laughs> yeah, it seems like there shouldn't be a positive score location for that anywhere. I'd be very surprised if there was at this point. Use this whole thing just to position a nine point shaman. <laughs> no, that's clearly not the correct choice. Not when there's a 12 point shaman right at home. Or a lot of lower point options. Okay. point of contact. That one seems fair to me. The wall is touching the edge. Uh, 15? Okay, I have four city centers. I can't possibly get all, all of them, but I can get three. Or three that way. 22, 21. Probably all gonna come down to the balloon. It's just how many points can I get from Looks like 45. The 
the balloon is one that I just have, like, no conception of how to properly place. I always just look for the highest number, which is pretty rare at this point. Like, most buildings, I kind of have an idea where I want to place them, and not balloons. Definitely not balloons. Straight out of the center of the temple. That is definitely touching a building. And now I think whether or not I lose depends entirely on these seaweed fields. Not a frequently said comment. I don't know what I'm saving this space for, though, on the other hand. <laughs> Seven. this and get a decent score out of these and then we'll be done. 17. I don't think there's any positive spot to put down the jeweler, or the jewelry, pardon. So, this was another quick Islanders challenge. Um, I tried to keep my play speed up. I know that some people enjoy the longer videos, but not everyone has that kind of time to lay out. But my challenge this time was that every single building I placed had to contact a previously placed building, with the one exception of my very first building, this mill, which touched the statue. So, the sprawl of my city is relatively similar to what I build under normal conditions. I mean, albeit it's, you know, considerably worse, like, things are intermixed horribly. Um, but I didn't actually end up with a city that looks that different from what I normally do, because just the very design of Islanders uh, tries to suggest you to clump buildings together. You don't want to build, like, random arms off like this, because there's literally nothing in the game that scores by being far away from everything, right? You always want to be near some stuff. So, I did find this enjoyable. I would not say that there was like a huge strategic takeaway though. Um, more so just the natural inclination of the game is that buildings be placed close to each other. So a challenge that forces that does not fundamentally alter uh, the outline of a city. It just changes how effectively buildings can be placed within that outline. So, hope you had a good time and I will see you here next time.